Hello everyone, my name is Alexis Robinson and you all are now tuned into Diversity Now. In today's topic, we have a special guest accompanying, accompanying us excuse me, with police reform. And Mr. Michael Stewart, Officer Michael Stewart, is here with us to weigh in on this topic. All right, well, Officer Stewart, this is actually a gentleman I know very well, and I know he's thinking not in that way. And from a mentor standpoint, I know this officer very well. I would like to, you know, talk to you about what do you think about the current state of, you know, police and communities of color? Right now, the state of policing is in transition. Um, not too long ago, President Obama, in fact, uh, enacted a task force called 21, 21st Century Policing. And one of the goals there was to uh, develop an overall relationship uh, between police uh, or law enforcement officials and the communities at large. Um, part of that involves engaging uh, with police positively. And of course, the police have to be on the proactive end of creating that type of an environment mm -hmm. where we can have positive interaction uh, between law enforcement officials and our community. Uh, secondly, uh, there is a need to uh, foster uh, an environment where there can be participation in activities that are hosted by police that will help to enhance uh, relationships within the community. And what I mean by that is police officers really do need to get out of their vehicles and go back to the old form of community policing where you actually walked in your community and you shook hands with your residents in your community and you got to know who those persons were and you formed a relationship. And then thirdly, uh, the problem solving needs to transition from finger pointing and blaming to, uh, okay, how do we address these problems as a whole? And how, what solutions can we come up with that we can agree on to begin to fix some of the social ills that lead to criminal behavior? So it seems like you're implying that there is a need for police reform um, in our country widespread. What do you feel like would be a, a effective way to retrain our police um, to fix these problems with the relationship between law enforcement and citizens? There's no question reform is needed. And in fact, uh, it is uh, certainly in the forefront. It was one of the main uh, points that uh, the, the president uh, really stressed was the need or reform uh, across this nation. Uh, we had to, as a law enforcement agency, uh, have to revisit how we police and what training is made available to police officers to better equip them with handling of citizens of a diverse background. Mm -hmm. And so the culture of policing now has to focus on protecting the dignity and the rights of all its citizens. And then secondly, community policing uh, has to become a, a, a joint problem solving effort where the community is involved in coming up with the answers that will provide for a safe community. And then third, there has to be fair and impartial policing. Uh, we, we know from history that there's always been that uh, if you're in my circle, then I'm going to treat you this way. And if you're not a part of my circle, uh, you're going to get the worst of treatments. And who's going to check me on that? And then third, there is the trusted legitimacy. This has to be reestablished uh, uh, with uh, citizens and law enforcement. So part of that is a positive presence. Uh, police have to do more than just the enforcement of law. There has to be an active role in building meaningful relationships. And then lastly, technology. Uh, uh, technology is very expensive, however, it has become a useful tool in helping, such as body cameras, such as body cameras uh, and of course your less than lethal force mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, 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 equipment, if that is also made available to police, that would help as well. Well, to speak again on relationships, um, I'm, in recent current events that we've seen, it's been you know stated that there's a lot of prejudices uh, against a lot of citizens that are causing these incidents. Do 
Do you believe that that is due to um, an ignorance of culture, of understanding culture, which may cause racial profiling, or do you think that it's an inherent prejudice in these select police officers? As this conversation, I'm so sorry to stop you all, but we're just going to have to cut right back into this after our brief break. <laughs>